I'll start us off. I'm not stood there. Like I'll get there. <laughs> oh, Christ, welcome the chaos. Right. <laughs> so, three years ago, in 2017, myself, Rachel and Lizzie, we went on a trip to the theatre, treat ourselves, nice night out. And our mate at the end of the night says, hey, girls, do you fancy a lift home? Now, it was very cold, it was January, so we gratefully accepted. And her sister was driving. So as she pulled into the lay-by outside of the theatre, our slim mate got in the front. Now, we were immediately met <laughs> with two thoughts. Number one, we should have definitely got the bus. <laughs> and number two was that we were now going to have to cram ourselves into the back of a Ford Fiesta. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you've ever seen three fat lasses try to balance themselves over the axle of a car, <laughs> but let me tell you, it took a lot of shoving, a lot of giggling, a lot of swearing, and how we managed to close the door was only by the grace of God. <laughs> and uh, something magic happened. Once we'd managed to get ourselves into that little car, we had a conversation that we had never had before. And it was a conversation about our bodies and it was joyous, and it was full of laughter, and it was instead of all the things that we wanted to change. And we knew that we had something special. And so as Lizzie and Rachel got out of the car that night and left me in the middle like an unset jelly pouring from a mould, <laughs> I was filled with the promise that there was a show to be made. So from that, Beach Body Ready was born, and you just saw the first 40 seconds of our show. I'm Rachel, this is Shauna, Lizzie, Sarah and Jess, and we are the Roaring Girls, a Hull-based theatre company that exists to make work that is fierce, feminist and fun. We use our autobiographical narratives to make work in order for other people not to feel quite so alone in the world. We created our last show, Beachbody Ready, to talk about the images that we see in the media and how it feels when you don't look like the people that you see in magazines on TV, on your social media timelines. We wanted to create a show that stuck two fingers up to everything the media ever said you should look like. Lizzie and I graduated from the University of Hull with our master's degrees in hand and started making shows for uh, a local theatre festival which were very short performances. And we didn't realise that a couple of years later we would be surrounded by a group of incredible people and we would be about to embark on our first national tour. So, how do you make a show like Beach Body Ready? Well, it started, as we often do, by just having a chat. Uh, and we talked, and we talked, and we talked some more, all about everything we hated about our bodies, everything we loved. We talked about the beauty industry and about the things that people had said to us that had stuck with us and the things that we wished they'd said instead. We told stories, we played games, we wrote a lot of lists. We unrolled big pieces of paper, filled them with ideas, we covered the walls in post-it notes, and we laughed until it hurt, and then we cried a lot, because we were putting a voice to something that we'd never shared before. And then just to balance it out, we had a dance to some Lizzo, which I can highly recommend, 100%. <laughs> but really, the process was all about finding our people. We worked with an amazing writer called Lydia, Lydia Marchant, who helped us, uh, who helped provide some structure to help us make sense of everything we were saying. We knew that we wanted to work with people who were passionate, who were supportive, um, and people who understood how important it was to get this right, how important it was to work in a way that was safe and a way that was kind. And so we made sure that anything that anyone shared in our room, uh, while it might be questioned and it might be disagreed with, would never be dismissed and would never be shared outside that room without permission. And it is an absolute point of pride to work with people for whom the well-being of our team is not merely an afterthought. So standing here now, it is incredible to look back at how we actually got here. Um, so when we first did the show, we had no idea how it was going to go down in front of an actual paying audience. <laughs> Uh, so on our opening night, us three were waiting backstage and we were listening to our rowdy, sold-out Hull audience entering yes. the theatre. And I have never felt so sick in my entire life. <laughs> I was questioning every decision that had brought me to that point. Uh, I looked across to Rachel, who was just staring in horror at the wall. Uh, and I looked across to Sarah, who had gone a lovely clammy shade of grey and looked like she was about to throw up. 
And we kept asking ourselves and each other, why have we decided to do this? What, what were we thinking? <laughs> um, is this just pure self-indulgence? What if people don't laugh? What if people get up and leave halfway through? We were imagining the worst, basically. Nothing could have prepared us for the response that we got. I had spent months before the first show preparing myself for what the audience reaction might be when I walked out in my swimwear for the first time on the stage. And I had prepared myself for the silence. I prepared myself for the groans, prepared myself uh, for people to avert their gaze. Uh, but what I did not prepare myself for was the raucous and celebratory cheer that filled the room. And nobody was sick and nobody laughed at my belly. So that was nice. <laughs> we were met with such warmth. We had whoops and cheers and claps. The minute we walked out on stage, it had all been worth it. Yeah. Well, I, my relationship with my body has come a long way in three years. And in 2017, in this show here, I wore a swim dress. And it was because the thought of unveiling my thighs and my stomach filled me with the most anxious fear. And now, if they had have let me, I would have done this entire talk wearing nothing but a smile. Honestly, <laughs> right? Because what is so scary about imperfection? And it hasn't been the easiest process for us. Online, uh, some of our advertisements for Beachbody Ready were met with a negative backlash. Words like fat, disgusting, you are taking beds from cancer patients. And that is something that somebody actually said for me and Rachel having the audacity to be fat and wear a swimming cosy online. <laughs> and it was harsh. And it was biting. But we clapped back with <coughs> gifs of fat women dancing <laughs> and babies wobbling their bellies <laughs> and the words of women far more articulate than we could ever be. Our bodies are not an apology. At the Roaring Girls, what we always say is that we like making work with our friends. Um, as we often talk about things which are really personal and difficult, it's great to be in a room where you know you're being supported with kindness. But although we love to make work with our friends, sometimes it is difficult. Um, often we take things a little bit too personally. Um, we find it a little bit easier to get annoyed or irritated at each other. Um, but I think the most kind of the biggest struggle that we have is finding time to be friends with each other. Um, whenever we find the space to be friends, it's always filled with talks of the work stuff as well. But working with, my, like working with friends is the greatest honour. The level of well-being and support increases. Um, well-being is at the very core of our company. Um, we always try to provide counselling sessions whenever we're working on projects to help talk about the difficult subjects. And we're always there to look after each other, build each other up and make sure that we're all happy and healthy. Working this way is essential for us. Uh, without putting our well-being at the forefront of what we do, Beachbody Ready certainly wouldn't be where it is today. Because it hasn't always been easy. Uh, when we applied for funding the first time round, we were unfortunately unsuccessful, which felt like a bit of a blur and a bit of a setback. But we were determined, and we really believed in this little nugget of an idea that we had. And we'd already programmed the show to be on at Hull Truck a few months later, so we decided to do it anyway. We didn't need the money, it was fine. <laughs> uh, but we, we scraped enough money together to pay ourselves £100 each for six weeks' work because we wanted to be able to pay ourselves something. Um, and this meant that we had to balance our day jobs alongside making a show, which was exhausting. It meant that a lot of us were juggling up to three or four jobs at once. So when we got to rehearsals, we would often be quite ratty with each other. <laughs> uh, but we were really passionate about this project and we wanted to put everything into it. But when you are talking about such raw and personal and emotional things at the end of a very long day, um, naturally there are tensions and tears and frustrations. Now the show Beach Body Ready for me is an absolute joy to be a part of. <laughs> there are still three years on Every single performance, these women make me cry with laughter because <laughs> um, who knows what's going to come out of their mouths, honestly. <laughs> um, but it is also a really emotionally draining show. As I said, we talk about a lot of personal things and there are some moments in the show, three years on, that I still find difficult to talk about, but there is always a friend next to me on stage to pass me a biscuit or to give my hand a little squeeze. And it's this support network that we've built up that Shauna talked about, which has got us through the not-so-nice bits. Now, in order to make the show, we went on a tour of the North. 
visiting different theatres as a team, talking and rehearsing in each city. We were invited to talk to a room full of producers who represented theatres across the north of England. We turned up and we listened intently to all of these incredible, eloquent pieces of work that were happening across the north. And then we turned up. <laughs> <laughs> and we bowled onto stage and we started doing a part of our performance. And you really have not known awkward until you have danced in front of a load of people in your swimwear on a Thursday afternoon and it is a room full of people who can make or break your career. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily for us, that afternoon was pivotal to the creation of the show. And the tour that we did managed to secure us some partnerships and some funding. Um, and that was crucial in us being able to expand our network, to find new collaborators to work with and new supporters. But also, crucially, to be able to engage with our audiences, with the women for whom this show was made. And so we went out into the community and we spoke to them and we listened to their experiences. And it led us to staunch supporters like uh, disability blogger Accessible Rach, and absolutely inspirational babes like the Shesiders, a Teesside-based girl gang who tackle isolation through friendship and really inspired us to be more positive. And we wanted to involve their voices in the project, so we created a zine, a companion piece to the theatre show, something tactile to take home and remind you to keep talking. We filled it with art, with poetry, with articles, all commissioned from the people that we'd, sp we'd spoken to, and we gave a free copy to everyone who came to see our show in Edinburgh. And that was the next step of the journey. We did 25 shows in 26 days at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. And I'm still having flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> it is intense, it is stressful, and it is exhausting. Everywhere in Edinburgh is up a hill. <laughs> and we walked for miles, and we built and took down a set every day. And uh, worst of all, uh, we spent a small fortune on a pint every evening. Mm. <laughs> but it was the most wonderful experience. We had wonderful venue staff, really vibrant, loud, responsive audiences. And we got to see so many shows and connect to other people who were making work about their bodies. It was great. It wasn't all smooth sailing. There was a fateful night where these two shared a bed and woke up with a thud as the frame collapsed beneath them. <laughs> <laughs> We slept in the kitchen on a mattress <laughs> for like three days. It was great. There were so many successes that we can't count them all. Five star reviews, uh, being a recommended show from The Guardian and the British Council, and uh, the things that we could never foresee, like the day that I got a text from an old school friend asking me if it was my show in an article on the front page of the BBC News app. And it was. <laughs> Following on from Edinburgh, we have achieved things that we definitely wouldn't have been able to achieve if we didn't go. Being at the end of the line in Hull means it's a real struggle to get people from outside of the city to come and see our work. And so Edinburgh was the perfect platform for us to share our message with the world. Since then, we have booked a 50-date tour in 39 arts venues across England and Wales. We have fantastic support from organisations who have helped us in, helped introduce us to new and exciting venues and audiences so we can share our work with them as well. And we have set up our first board of trustees as we move forward with our company development. And it is filled with amazing people from all corners of the country and all with very different exciting skills. Now, the most wonderful thing that's come out of this entire experience for all of us has been our audience responses. Um, usually at the end of the show, we like to hang back usually in the bar, preferably in the bar, uh, so that our audiences can come and chat to us if they feel like they'd like to. Uh, and we have had people come running up to us and, and hug us and cry with us and share stories and thank us. And if they haven't been able to identify with one of our stories personally, they know someone who has maybe gone through something similar. And these personal connections that we've made with people have just been so magic. There was one audience member who tweeted us that she, uh, during a particularly sad bit of the show, she started to cry and this uh, lady next to her just reached out and held her hand for a little bit. And they, these were two total strangers just comforting each other. And we were actually able to introduce them officially over Twitter and they ended up going for a coffee together, which we thought was really lovely. Yeah, and the online responses to our show um, have been overwhelmingly positive. People leave us messages all the time like this. Um, telling us how they understood, they resonated, they saw part of themselves in us. 
And occasionally, our Instagram uh, will get a, a, a picture sent from somebody in a bikini, and it says, uh, I am not ready to share my body with the world, but I do want to share it with the Roaring Girls. <laughs> We tell our stories in the hope that, that our audiences will share theirs, and one sticks out for us. It was a woman called Hannah who came to see the show and wanted to take a little bit of Beachbody Ready with her, and she knew that it was important to empower and celebrate other women. She was on a night out, she was in the ladies' toilets, and she saw a woman with the most beautiful tattoos. And she said to her, look, I've just been to see this show and it tells me that I need to celebrate other women and tell them when they look great and I love your tattoos. And that woman replied, did you go see Beach Body Ready? <laughs> Paul's a village. It is, it is. It's, it's not that impressive. It's <laughs> Hannah has now come from being an audience member to a person who is on our board of trustees. So, we encourage you to find your people to be more open and supportive, and if someone looks good, you better tell them. <laughs> because those moments of connection, encouraging people to be a little bit bolder and a whole lot kinder, is exactly what our theatre is about. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs>